Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 14. We now look at high-order equations and eventually high-order systems of equations. So let's consider one single higher-order ODE in this form. This is the nth order equation, so u to the nth derivative equals to some function f, depending on t, on u, and on all the lower derivatives of u. So u prime, u double prime, all the way to u to the n minus 1 derivative. And we are also given a set of initial conditions. So initial conditions are given at t0 for u and all the lower derivatives of u. So these are given numbers. So we now introduce a systematic way, a change of variable. It will always be this change of variable that would um, change our scalar higher order ODE into a system of first order ODE. So the change of variable is the following. So take the unknown u, I'm going to introduce n different unknowns, I'll form a vector of it. So x1, the first one, is simply equal to u, x2 will be u prime, x3 will be u double prime, and you keep differentiating and get new axes, and the xn would be u to the n minus 1 derivative. Okay, and now we want to write out an ODE for all these unknowns x, x prime of certain index under shall equals to some function depending only on these x as well. Let's see. If we take x1, x1 prime by definition is u prime, and u prime by definition is x2. So x1 prime is x2. And then x2 prime by my definition will be u double prime, and u double prime is x3, and you have x3. So x2 prime is x3. I think you see the pattern now. x3 prime will be, differentiate this, you get u triple prime, which exactly is x4. And you can keep going until you reach the second last one. So x n minus 1 prime will equal to u n minus 1 derivative, which is exactly x n. So these first n minus equa one equation, the left hand side is the derivative, and the right hand side is the x with the index one bigger than the one on the left. Okay, so these are always the same. These are caused by my variable changes. Now the last equation is different. X n prime, x n. If I differentiate, I get u to the nth derivative which is the left-hand side of my ODE, so I have to use my ODE now. My ODE say that derivative equals to f as a function of all these. So I would put it down here, but keep in mind that I want to write everything in terms of the axis now. That's my new unknown variable. So I see u is x1, u prime is x2, u double prime is x3, and so on and so forth. So I would change it into x1, x2, and xn as the input to this function f. We see now we changed a higher order equation into a system of first order equation where the number of equations here exactly matches the order of the scalar higher order equation. Okay, And we also need to set in the initial condition which um, we're given for u and its lower derivatives at t0, and we see that this exactly becomes x1, that's x2, that's x3, and that's xn. So now the initial conditions will be given for my unknown vector at t0. Okay, let's take a look at a concrete example. Consider now I have the following ODE, which is a um, Nonlinear because of that one, but that's okay. And I have initial condition given at t0, which equals to 0. We go through this standard um, variable change. I call my x1 to be u, my x2 to be u prime. 
then I can write it into a system. So x1 prime would be just x2 because of my variable change. And x2 prime would actually be u double prime, which is in the equation here. u double prime is the negative of all of that. And I have to keep in my mind that I need to rewrite all this into x1 and x2. So I see u will be changed into x1 and u prime will be changed into x2. And that's exactly what I have done here. So I copy the same thing and change u into x1 and u prime into x2. And then we need to specify the initial condition. So x1 at 0 will be u at 0, which is 1. x2 at 0 will be u prime at 0, which is 2. So we want to remark that um, if instead you have a system of high-order equations, and that can be treated in the same way, we can write each equation, which would be high-order, into a system of first-order ODE. And we do that for each high-order equations. We'll take an example now. Let's see, I have the system of second-order ODEs. Two equations, each is second order. U and V are my unknowns. So U double prime equals to something, and V double prime equals to something. And on the right-hand side, I have only lower-order derivatives, which means only first-order derivatives. With this initial condition given, at T equals to 1 for U, U prime, and V, V prime. Now let's introduce this systematic way of variable change. So first take care of u. For u, I will need two unknowns because it's second order. So I call x1 is u and I call x2 is u prime. And that shall be enough for u. And then look at the equation for v, which is second order. So I will need two unknowns again. So x2, uh, x3 will be v and x4 will be v prime. Now we can write out a 4x4 four four system of first order equations for all these axes. So x1 prime will be u prime is x2 by my variable change. And then x2 prime will be u double prime. Then I will have to go into this equation and write the right hand side over here, but change u into x1 and u prime into x2 and v into x3, and v prime in x4. So we see this will be x1, and this will be x4. That's what we have here. Okay, so we're done with the first equation. Now look at the second set of variable change. x3 prime will be v prime, which will be x4. So that's here. And then x4 prime will be v double prime. Then we need to use the equation. We will put the right-hand side over down here, but write them in the new variables. So v would be x3, u prime will be x2, and v prime will be x4, and u is x1, which is this. And the final step is to identify the initial condition. So the initial conditions are given at t equals to 1. That's my t0. So all the x at that value of t shall be given, which is exactly u1, u1 prime, v1, v1 prime, which we know we set some dummy numbers to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Hope um, that was clear and you enjoyed it, and see you next time.